Uh, speaking of championships changing hands, we got a title changing hands last night on Dynamite. Not exactly a newsworthy title change because the championship means absolutely nothing, but we saw Ricky Starks, Texas native, uh, become the new FTW champion by beating Brian Cage with the help of Powerhouse Hobbs at ringside. Now, I thought the match was really good. Thoroughly enjoyed the match. The tension within Team Taz obviously indicated, like, they tried to play it off like, oh, what a swerve, Hobbs turned on Cage. Like, didn't we all see this coming, knowing that Cage was on the outs with Team Taz? They were probably turning him face. I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. It's the fucking slowest burning face turn I've ever seen. Um, Starks being the new champion is fine. I'm a big Starks guy. But kind of elaborate on what we were talking about earlier, Mr. Marceau, over text, about how much they've butchered Team Taz. And the infighting with the, with the faction is fine, I guess. But, like, prior to this point, these guys could not win jack shit. Like, as far as singles feuds, tag team feuds, these guys haven't... You talk about, you know, Lance Archer not winning anything meaningful. These guys never won anything meaningful, and now they're already splitting up. I feel like it's one of the bigger misuses of the million factions they have at the moment in AEW. No, yeah, I'm a big fan of Team Taz, so um, the whole infighting and Taz was just like, oh, yeah, we got to settle this, like, this is how we're going to settle it, and then obviously the big turn came, but they made it seem like, like no one saw it coming when it was kind of right in your face unless you're an idiot, so... It is what it is. I don't love it. I, I thought they were good together as a group. But like you said, they're kind of like the bad guy villain in a movie who could just never get up. Like, he couldn't even get up over on the good guy. Not once. So, like, they were a good team, I thought. But, like, they never won when it mattered. They never really did anything. Like, lost every few that mattered. Um, never really got any, like, heat to even get come up. And so, like, even if they did do something bad, it just wasn't even... You didn't even care that they got their comeuppance because they just lost constantly. They never won a few to my knowledge they were just like a good group of guys they mixed together i thought taz was great as a as a commentator i thought cage was good starks and then powerhouse and i mean your favorite hook um but, <laughs> i don't know i i kind of wish powerhouse was the one that beat cage i don't know him and just like i guess him protecting starks is kind of how they're going to do it but i don't know i just i would rather power i think powerhouse hobbs has probably the most potential even more than starks maybe wow, I, don't know. I feel okay. like hobbs Especially with the WWE, I think could be a big, big time player. I think he's great. Hook, I mean, he's fine. I, I know you think he's like a middle schooler because he does look like a middle schooler, but um, <laughs> I think he's fine for like his role. It's not like he's in there wrestling yet. Yeah. Um, he's kind of like a, a manager at this point, basically. So I'm fine with that. I think I like Starks, I like Cage, I like Cobb. So going forward should be good. But I think they should have kept him a lot around a lot longer and actually made them win matches and kind of be like a legitimate threat instead of just being another straight, another group of heels aren't straight shooters. And they have a lot of good factions in AEW, too many factions, of course, but like of all the factions they have to be booking this one as poorly as they have. And what I, what I think that one of the factions with some of the more potential of every other faction in AEW to me is mind boggling, but um, obviously it's not over. They're just getting cage out of there and branching him off on his own. But I think we've discussed this before. When you already have this monster babyface in Lance Archer, who also isn't really doing much at all, you know, at the no, at the moment of no at the moment, why would anyone think that Cage would be any different? Like, where do you go from here with Cage if he gets his win back over Starks or Hobbs? Maybe that's the the end game here. Maybe it's a triple threat. Who knows? But like beyond that, though, do you have him face maybe Miro for the championship? Does he win? Probably not. Like, I just feel like you already have enough of those, not even enough, but, like, Lance Archer, to me, already feels that already fills that role. You could have another monster babyface, but I just feel like a breakout babyface run for Cage right now just might be too soon, at least in my opinion. It's funny that you say that, too, because you're like, who could he face? I was literally about to say Miro, because that's the only other person I can yeah. think of at this point. And I see him as a mid-card guy, um, at least in the near future, so it's not like, I mean, Omega's already tied up, clearly, with Hangman. I mean, there isn't too many other big heels that he could really go after. I mean, maybe like Matt Hardy, but mm, I'm all set with that. I think <laughs> Carol's kind of the uh, best example at this point, but I don't think he's going to win. So it's like like a Lance Archer situation that he'll go for the title, lose again, and kind of be a big baby face that has no kind of direction. We're a year removed from Powerhouse Hobbs as Will Hobbs losing to Orange Cassidy in 10 seconds on Dark. Have you officially gotten that stench washed out of your mouth from that a year ago, or is it still stinging for you? So it's still there. I'll never forget. It's like one of those things like, <laughs> I'll let it go eventually, but I'll never forget. 
after that match he had with Hangman, it kind of won me over. But like at the back of my head, I'm still like, he did job out to Orange Cassidy like <laughs> nine months ago. So like I, I I'm over it now, but I'll never forget. So like if he ever wins the world title or anything, I, I'll make sure I tweet out like. Remember when he lost to Orange Cassidy in three seconds? So it'll just always be there. So in, in his love, debut, no less. Love Hobbs though. Big Hobbs guy. I think he has tremendous amount of talent. Um, he's still, I hope, fairly young. I don't know his age, but he has the look. He had a great match with Hangman. If if done right, I think he could be a big time player for them. I'm glad to see you coming around to Powerhouse Hobbs because I didn't know how you felt about him originally. We talked about him when he first got signed six, seven, eight months ago. I didn't know if you were a big fan at that point. I don't think you were, but I'm glad he's kind of grown on you. I've, I've been a Hobbs fan since I first saw him. When he first came out for that dark match, and I think they gave him an entrance, I'm like, wow, this guy's a fucking monster. I haven't even seen him wrestle yet, and this guy looks like he could be a star for this company. And then the bell rang, and then Orange Cassidy hit the Superman punch, and it was over in 10 seconds. And I'm like, why the fuck would you do that? Even if you know that you're not going to sign the guy, which they ended up doing anyway months later, it still makes literally no sense. Like, even if they gave Orange some offense and had him fight from underneath and won, I would be more okay with that. I don't know. I get hung up on stupid shit. It's merely nitpicking, but I really don't understand why they did that a decade ago. Or you know, even a year later, it could be ten years later. It could be a decade later. And I still will never forget that, like you said.